Paul Chapman, even though she is beautiful, was it a lot of pressure playing what is supposed to be the most loved and beautiful woman in all of mythology? <laughs> no. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh my God, yes. Less so at the time, yeah. much more so now ah. when people go like, you know, oh, you've aged or, oh, and you're like, oh my God, it was 30 years ago nearly. Yeah, it's a um, long time. Yeah, so... Yes, I definitely felt the pressure. And I had no idea that she was meant to, initially, obviously when I auditioned, I didn't know she was meant to be this beautiful woman that stops everyone in their tracks. And I think I'm sure I've told this story before, but like, then I found out and I was a bit like, oh my God, no pressure. Right. And on the very first day that I met Rick, I was standing at the craft service table with a bagel in my hand they hadn't decided if they wanted to use my hair or a wig. And they wanted, they liked my hair color, but my hair, as you can see, is curly. And they wanted very much that kind of Cleopatra thing, right. the fringe. So I think I had like a stocking cap on, no makeup, and like half a bagel being shoved in my throat. And I felt somebody tap me on the shoulder and be like, hey, I'm Rick. And I was in a dressing gown and I was like, get a cream cheese on. Oh no. I was like, yeah, I'm the most beautiful girl in the world. In the universe. I was like, well, it's. It's uphill from here. I mean, it can only get better, right? Right, exactly. <laughs> Basically, no. it was like, okay. Oh gosh, that's so funny. <laughs> you know, the uh, one of my one of my favorite uh, uh, reactions from you is just a dead stare. Is we, uh, you know, we know how powerful her uh, her uh, her scent is because it's yeah. it's technologically enhanced to yeah. absolutely screw with the guys. And by the end of that first SG-1 uh, episode, the SG-1 team is immune to it. So by the time we catch up with her the season two, at yeah. the end of the, the very last, one of the last scenes, uh, if not uh, the last scene, she's in Rick's, she's in um, Jack's face. And he says, you know, you really ought to do something about the breath. Yeah. And the, the look back on your face is like, Really? I just gave you this powerful monologue and that's what you <laughs> had to say. <laughs> yeah, and uh, I'm pretty sure that was an ad lib, I think. You uh, know, why or, am I not surprised? Yeah, I think so. I can't remember, but there were many. There were many. <laughs> <laughs> oh, geez. What, oh, retired millennial, was it weird to refer to yourself as we in SG-1? I thought I almost noticed a smirk a few times. Uh, it was at the audition because I didn't know. All I got originally was just like two pages of a part of the scene. And they didn't say anything about why she's referring to herself in that way. And I know at the time I was like, well, the only people I know who refer to themselves as we are royalty. So I was like, is she, is she crazy or is she a queen? Like, I didn't know what she was. Um, and then... I thought, well, I'm just gonna play it like like she's royal, like that it's not a joke or awkward. So, um, but no, I think I took to it quite well. <laughs> Absolutely. I had never been, I hadn't been aware of that when I first saw the episode. I was like, who, who, I mean, the only people who refer themselves what? as we is the Borg, you know? And it's like, oh, it's a royalty thing. Oh, well, that makes sense. Okay. Yes. She's yes. not just loopy. No, <laughs> queen, darling, a queen. <laughs> <laughs> Tracy says, with voicing a character like Sophie in, a, in the video game, does that inspire you to take on a live action role like that on a TV or in, in a movie? Oh, hell yeah, I would love to. I mean, I am up for anything. That sounds very dodgy. But I mean, you know, in terms of, of acting, yeah. I feel like I have been an actress since I was 19 years old. So I've been doing it a long time. And I love acting. I love performance. I love play. I really like to challenge myself. So yeah, I'd love to do something like that. Unfortunately, it's not up to me. You know, one has to, you have to get an audition. You have right. to get in the room and 
today with films and series, it's there's so many layers and so many people that you have to kind of like get through before you actually get a job. Um, but yes, if there are any producers out there watching, I'm very open to that. <laughs> Matt Somke wanted to know, um, he says, if you have one, I'd like to know what your favorite John Carpenter movie is. Oh, John Carpenter, is that like to horror films, isn't it? I think. Is it The Shining? Yeah, I believe <laughs> so. So. God, um, I'm embarrassing. I should know. Science I feel like fiction I know. and horror. I'm not um, even sure if I've seen one. I'm not Shame sure. Shame on me. Well, shame on me too. Have you got another question? <laughs> it's a long list. Okay, so like uh, Halloween. Uh, ah, oh yes, of course. They Halloween. live. Oh, they live would be my favorite. Oh, Halloween would be mine. Yeah. The first one. The original. Did Starman. Yeah. Did the thing? And oh, of course, Batman. the thing. Oh, I love the thing as well. Man, that thing. But still, Halloween, I think. Yeah, absolutely. Have you seen They Live? No, I haven't. So They Live is a film where aliens have come to Earth. But we can't tell that they look like us unless you wear a certain ser uh, set of glasses, sunglasses. Uh -huh. And billboards say, like, watch TV and, you know, obey. And it's very, right. it's very subversive. But it's right. it's a Whoa, freaky film. So, and, John well, Carpenter. I'll check it out. Absolutely. I, uh, I used to love horror films. I was obsessed when I was sort of like <laughs> 10, 10 to 13. Now I can only watch them like this. Like I have to hide <laughs> my hands and sort of peer through one. Otherwise I don't feel safe. I mean, I can barely, I'm like, I can't know. I have to <laughs> some watch of them, it. There's some really good stuff out there. I, oh, I, I try know. to watch one every two or three months. I'm not a gore fan. No, you know? same. But psychological, like Dawn of the yeah. Dead, like the original. Ooh. Yeah. Absolutely. <laughs> a retired millennial also wanted to know any of your uh, SG One co-stars you keep in particular touch with. Oh, loads! Yeah, I mean Amanda and I speak quite often. I'm going to be doing her um, Gabbard event in September, which will be oh, good. Um, yeah. Okay. Um, so I know they've had to move that, unfortunately, because I think it was meant to be in April. Um, and you know, what was fantastic about Half or Host is it completely renewed, uh, my relationship with many of the actors that I'd worked with and some who I've never worked with, like Tori and I had never worked together, but I had met her like once or twice. When I say met, it was like, hello, hi, bye-bye. Bye. So yeah, when I got in touch with her, I didn't, I wasn't sure she would say yes. I thought she might be kind of think, oh, who is this woman asking me? But she could not have been nicer. And now I love her. Love, love, love her. Um, so I, Terrell's always busy, but always, you know, speak to her. Chris Judge, I speak to, I speak to Rick occasionally. Like we text, I wouldn't say very often. He tends to go off grid. Right. <laughs> um, and I was exceptionally close to our darling Cliff, obviously. He was one of my dearest, dearest friends from before Stargate, um, from South Africa, from when we both grew up in South Africa. Uh, so yeah, lots of them. And what a fine bunch of people. And I think a real testament, actually, to uh, Brad and the team for casting such a brilliant, or writing, firstly, such a great show, and then also getting such a fantastic group of people together who still are friends. Thanks for watching this clip from Dial the Gate. You can find the full live stream shows on our YouTube channel or visit dialthegate.com for the complete schedule. See you on the other side.